so let's make the first person do a grenade, right? Uh, so most of you guys were able to do this, but uh, some of you, like Brianna, Brianna, you weren't able to get the Unreal Engine, so you could just watch for now. Just that's okay. Just just follow along for now, and then you can do the next one with us. So the key right now is that the projectile behaves currently by detecting when it hits something, and then adding an impulse, and then this destroying itself. So we don't want it to destroy itself. We want the grenade to basically bounce off of things, and then fire an explosion. So I've already gone ahead and added a radial force component to the projectile. And I'm going to increase the radius here, maybe, I don't know, that seems good. And instead of making this thing an impulse, I'm just going to have this thing change the velocity of things by clicking the checkbox here. This makes it so that you don't have to guess how much force you have to apply. You could also keep this low and then crank this up. Basically, this will now affect the mass. And so we can try that too. That's fine. Uh, it's really pretty simple. If I play now, it's the ball as opposed to just uh, dying. And projectiles by themselves already have a lifetime of how long they last. Where is that? Gravity scale, the balance. This is the this is the projectile blueprint that comes with the first person shooter template. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I've added the radial force component, and what I want to do is when the projectile starts, I'm going to wait three seconds by adding a delay, and I'm going to spawn a particle system. Uh, you can also you can also do this with an emitter, which this is basically a detached particle system. I could just do explosion here. The place that I'm going to spawn it is going to be at the location of this projectile here, and we can have it play a sound. And then finally, if you want to actually apply a radial force, just drag this guy into the scene, pull a wire, and you're going to call fire impulse, which is basically a function on the radial component that fires out a physics force at the location of the component. That's it. So save and play. If I just let this thing... Make the projectile bigger. You can already make the radial force bigger. I'm actually going to slow down this projectile too, because it's a little bit too fast. Are you trying to scale up the radial force? Yeah. You have to drag the radius up here. Yeah, as a property of the component. Oh, okay. So I'm noticing that it doesn't hit anything. <laughs> That's probably the most game projectile ever. Very little. I think I'm gonna need to crank this guy up. Yeah, you need it's, you need this hooked up to the event begin play. It shouldn't be hooked up to any of this. None of this stuff here really does anything. In fact, you can probably delete most of that stuff. Delay is just after the projectile has spawned. That you on event begin. Seconds. I, I put it. <laughs> so the projectile will automatically die after. So like that's just a property of the projectile. I don't think my radial force is nearly large enough. Let's just try this. Oh really? That's pretty cool. The <laughs> properties for uh. Sure. 
spawn emitter. I'm sorry, what'd you say, Michael? Okay. <laughs> Let's try that. Oh, so actually, mine is 10,000 right now. So mine should be plenty high enough. No, you don't use any of the uh, add impulse at location behavior. Notice I have nothing else in my script. I don't have any of the other old behavior for adding impulses. It's just event begin play, add a delay, spawn an emitter, play a sound, and then fire the impulse. Oh, okay. Do you have to check the uh, impulse uh, launcher thing? I'm trying it because I want to see that it changes. Uh, this thing will basically ignore. This will ignore like the, the weight of everything around it, so it doesn't care how heavy something is. It will move that object at a speed like that. It will force that object to move at a specific speed. Uh, it could be bad because it basically means that, like, in, the way Unreal works with physics is that actually the bigger the physics object is, the heavier it makes it. So if you have like a super big guy like this, and you have like, a, a velocity change effect, yeah. If you have like interpenetrating collision, also Unreal does not like that. But if I had this guy, so that thing will actually notice how it flies, it kicks it out. It doesn't really care how heavy that thing is, even though that thing is probably 30 to 40 times heavier. If anything else, it kind of treats it like it's a rag doll. Uh, also, after this happens, you can just destroy the projectile. That's fine. What's up? Um, I can't just do a, do, um, fire, a fire impulse is just coming up with the... Yeah, you have to add a radial force component oh. to your projectile. Yeah. It was just not showing up with content sensitive the moment I unclicked that it came up. I'm just wondering if, like, the fire impulse is a ragdoll. Is it just a ragdoll? Oh. Like, soft body? So... <laughs> Are you using a third-person project or a first-person project? Uh, I was using a third-person Okay. Yeah, it, well, because, like, the first-person project, the character doesn't have, like, a mesh. He, he's literally just a pair of arms. <laughs> a make those, like, uh, You know, actually, maybe. We can do this. We can try this. Let me just try binding uh, space. I think if I grab the mesh off here, and I think physics. Yeah, you don't need any of the original at all. Is it yeah. It, it is. It is. It is a rigid body already, actually. Uh, so I think it used to be that yeah, you could do partial ragdoll, and it used to be you basically wake up the physics. So uh, you tell by default the the mag ragdoll is inactive, yeah. and if you want to activate, you say, "Hey, dude, uh, go ahead and simulate your physics." And I want to say it's one of these guys here. Uh, let's see, set all bodies, simulate physics. Yeah. Playing this thing can make it that, uh, unreal. There, that's also Unreal, actually. Unreal, y you know, like, you have ragdoll support in Unreal, so you can basically tell it to go die and play ragdoll. And you should try this here, Kelvin. Try the uh, set all bodies, simulate physics. I don't even know what, what this will do on the first person. Space bar is bouncing. <laughs> yeah. So the default character should have all that stuff set up. Uh, even if you don't have collisions, what you can do is, if you enable ragdoll, it'll just fall through the world. But I wonder, like this guy here. Yeah. See, he doesn't have a skeleton mesh. That's actually yeah, first person shooter, man. That's 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 how that that's how that works. So okay, so this uh, Brianna, just watch up here for a second. Uh -huh. So don't type anything yet. So <laughs> it's not about whether get actor location is there or not. It's about where do you want this emitter to spawn? Where do you want this sound to spawn, right? Uh -huh. 
And so what you do, the way that you work in a real blueprint is you grab a wire from this guy and you pull him backwards and you're like, okay, how, where do I want this thing to spawn? It might be the actor location. It might also be the location of a component. So it should be like, if you have this, right, it spawns at zero, zero, zero. Uh -huh. So you want it to actually just specify any location. So you can actually just say, hey, maybe I can get the location of the sphere or the radial force component. It can be any of these. It doesn't really have to be uh, location. It can even be a transform. If I wanted to have get actor transform, this thing here is a location, rotation, and scale. So I could do this as well. And you can plug that in here as well. So it doesn't really matter what specifically it is. It just needs to be something that is fed into the spawn emitter. So like you, should, you shouldn't need to like care so much what actually is connected to it. All you should really care is that, hey, I'm missing a location. I should probably feed it something. Uh, except for the radial, the, the fire impulse actually fires at the location of the impulse component. Okay. So. Yeah, I don't want this thing to actually. Uh, yeah, you can just have it destroy itself after it fires the impulse. That, that, that'll kill it. Because the projectile by itself dies after three seconds, so... What we can do... Anything else we should do? What else should we do with this projectile before we move on? Uh, <laughs> oh, cool. Yeah, let's let's have this thing. When it hits something, it it splits apart, yeah. like an actual actor. <laughs> okay, now you're just trolling me. The Lord of the Rings. Oh, you mean Harry Potter? Yeah, Harry Potter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, where it basically multiplies. Uh, what we can. Yeah, we can have this thing set up so it spawns more of itself, yeah. and why not? Uh, what we can do is right before it destroys itself, why don't we just set up a loop? And we'll have it spawn anywhere from one, from zero to three extra projectiles. Yeah. So uh, what I'm going to do is basically have it spawn. Uh, this is a for loop that basically goes possibly zero times, possibly uh, up to three times. And after it's done, it's going to destroy itself. And every time that it goes through the loop body, what we can just have it do is spawn an actor. We can actually just have it spawn itself. and now that it can spawn itself, it can spawn itself at itself at its own location. Like so. And I kind of want this thing to move. But let's just see what happens when I do that. So basically this thing has a random chance of spawning between zero to three extra projectiles when it explodes. <laughs> I might want to turn that down for now. No, only after it destroys itself. So, oh, this thing here? Uh, just It's the same way that the projectile is currently being spawned. You just type spawn. Uh, yeah, in the drop down box here, where it's the class, you can specify the projectile. 
uh, spawn actor from class. That's the name of it. So what actually is happening is because these things are all spawning on top of one another, I need to actually spread them out a little bit. So what we can do is break the transform here. Make a transform here. I'm just going to spread them apart a little bit. Currently, they're all spawning on top of one another. And I'm just going to take this location. I'm going to add a little bit of randomness to where it's actually spawning. And to do that, you can just take this transform, add a random amount here. I'm going to add anywhere between 100 to 200 random for x and for y and z. And the idea here is that I'm going to basically add a random vector. This is how you make a random vector. You have a random vector that is made up of three random floats. And you just add it to the existing transform. And that's what you plug in here instead. And that will kind of split apart a little bit. These may spawn underneath the ground. And let's just crank this guy up. I'm going to have it always spawn at least two, up to five. Yeah. It'll keep doing this whole section a random number of times. So this loop body will basically say, uh, will basically cause it to repeat whatever's connected here this many times. I'm actually going to do this random integer and range. Yeah, I just want this thing to be at least two and up to five extra projectiles. The thing is, I don't want it to always spawn one, so I'll have it go between like, you kind of want it to be a random chance, right? Sometimes it'll spawn nothing. There it only spawn two. There it spawn three. Yeah, that's got to get stopped. But it looks like a volcano of gas. So what's interesting, yeah, with just a simple loop here with a body connected to the spawn actor, you can make it do kind of whatever you want. And, you know, in reality, you kind of don't want to spawn that many. So, in fact, what you should probably do is instead of spawning the same projectile, what you could do is just take your projectile here. I would make a copy of it. Uh, my projectile explosion thing. I don't really have a good name for this. And I'm going to have it spawn, let's see, if I edit this guy, I'm going to remove all of the extra spawn behavior here on these projectiles that spawned. The only reason, I want to spawn different projectiles so that it doesn't keep creating more of itself. And then you can actually have it. You could do that too, if you wanted to. Um, I'm just going to have it spawn this one. So the ones that are spawned are never going to duplicate themselves. I still have a chance to spawn more than one. All right. So this one here, didn't mean to delete all of this. Save that. This is the thing that spawned. 
it'll spawn the explosion projectile, and this thing all it does is it does the normal projectile spawning behavior. So, so those four won't spawn. <laughs> velocity that's because projectiles by themselves move automatically when they're spawned so that's just how it is yeah they basically are oriented if you wanted to orient these things in the same direction that they're facing what you do is instead of spawning these where is it here the rotation here should probably just be connected to here as well that way they inherit the rotation of the existing projectile right now they're actually not rotated correctly. This the X transform rotation here. This is set up here. Yeah, that should be it. Oh, because these things aren't actually rotating. Yeah, you probably want to just make them move instead of just spawning them and then letting them go. You should probably actually rotate them to face. Maybe what? Maybe if you have face up, they explode upwards. Is there, but there, is there a way that you have them like explode? Like if they just go out? Like oh, uh, randomly, sure. Uh, so I think that the the only issue here is that because these things are projectile movement, uh, what I want to do is instead the things that are spawned. I actually don't want them to act like projectiles at all. I just want them to just lay there like inert balls. And then what we can do is we can give them a force. After they, so I've just I just removed the projector. And what you can do is have the sphere simulate physics. It'll spawn it. I want these to drop actually. Anyways, collision enabled. Yeah, I need to actually enable collision. Block all. Here, let's actually get rid of the collision component as well. I don't think this thing is necessary. So now it's just it's just a physics ball that has collision. It looks like a projectile, but it should just. <laughs> this thing might be scaled up. Let me just let me just scale it down here. Give it a different material too. I don't know. So those are physics. Now that they're physics objects, and explosion is kind of spawning at a word spot, we can fix that too. Now that they're physics objects, after they've been spawned, what we can do is on the projectile that spawns them. We can grab the thing that's spawned, and we can get the, what is it called? What is the actual mesh called? The sphere. We can get the sphere off of the projectile that's spawned, and we can add a force. Uh, let's do set linear velocity. Setting the line linear velocity will let us move this thing upwards in the air, so it'll shoot upwards. And let's just give it a velocity upwards of like, I don't know, 150. And in this case, we don't actually need to separate them anymore. I'm actually just going to delete all this random stuff, and I'm just going to plug in the transform. So it should spawn a physics ball. They get popped up in the air slightly. Uh, I need, may need to crank this up too. And it may be a problem that they all come up with each other. They may not. Uh, you can have it judged by physics. All right, let's move on to the next uh, exercise. Um, 
we did this in the very, very first or maybe second class. So I want you guys to, either in the first person project or in the third person project, I want you guys to make a, you're going to make a pickup. And at first, I just want you to make the pickup so that it gets destroyed when you run over it. And then I want you to make the pickup bob up and down and spin in place in the level. Okay? And I'll come around and help you with that. 